rescue with him, seeking from him a sign from heaven to test him. Please be seated. Please keep your Bibles turned to Mark chapter 8. We'll be reading some passages there in just a moment. The fictional story is told about a businessman who was very, very late for a very crucial meeting. He had circled a block about a dozen times trying to find a parking space, and he just could not find a parking space. Finally, in desperation, he decided to bargain with God. Now, he was not a Christian, so he looked up to heaven. He said, Lord, if you will help me, if you'll help me find a parking space, I'll, I'm a Christian. I will stop my drinking. I will fly straight. I promise. Well, the words had just barely got out of his mouth when he, he turned the corner and right there was a parking space that he could just drive into. He looked up to heaven again and said, Lord, never mind, I found one myself. Oh, uh, he did not see, did he? You know, so often, so often we find people in our world who can't see for looking. The evidence could be as clear as the nose on their face, but they cannot see it because they simply, they simply refuse to see it. There's an old Persian proverb that starts like this. He who knows not and knows not that he knows not is a fool. Shun him. The proverb continues. He who knows not and knows that he knows not is a child. Teach him. Furthermore, the proverb says, He who knows and knows not that he knows is asleep. Wake him. And then, he who knows and knows that he knows is wise. Follow him. Our question this morning is how do we become wise? How do we become wise? Go back to that uh, uh, passage in Mark chapter 8 that Billy read. The Pharisees come to Jesus. They're not coming because of faith. They're not coming to seek knowledge. They're not coming to improve themselves. They're coming to test him. They ask him for a sign that word sign there, just substitute the word miracle. Hey, give us a little razzadazz. Give us a little, you know, a little spectacular, and, and maybe we might believe. <laughs> Not those Pharisees. Just like the Persian proverb, the Pharisees were those who knew not, but knew not what they knew not. Oh, they thought they knew. They thought they had all the answers, and they wanted to put Jesus to this test. But even if Jesus gave them sign after sign after sign to prove to them that he is Lord, they still wouldn't be able to see him for who he was. Why? Because they didn't want to believe. The fact is, Jesus at this point had already given the Pharisees sign after sign after sign. Jesus had performed many miracles in their presence, but they refused to see it. It's not that they can't see, it's that they won't see it. They refuse to see. It's like they're saying, I know it all. I know it all, so don't confuse me with the facts. Don't do that. The Pharisees are people who know not, but they know not that they know not. So what does the Persian proverb say about them? They're fools. That's why Jesus leaves them without giving them an answer, giving them a sign. Jesus knew, Proverbs 26, answer not a fool according to his folly unless lest you become like him yourself. Jesus gets in the boat and leaves them behind. My friends, this morning, 
if you want to be truly wise, if you want to be truly wise, don't be like the Pharisees who refuse to see. Don't be like those who won't see. Open your eyes. Don't be like those who don't want to be confused with the facts because they think they know it already. Open up your heart to God. H.G. Wells, the guy that wrote uh, the novel War of the Worlds, wrote many other novels. He wrote a short story called The Country of the Blind. In this story, uh, we've got a country that's isolated from the world. And everybody that lives in this country, they're blind. They can't see anything. For generations, no one has been able to see anything. And then one day, uh, a man stumbles upon them, discovers this country of the blind. He can see. He starts telling them all the wonderful things that he sees, all the, the parts of the visual world that is there, and he tries to describe it to them to try to help them. But this country of the blind, they're proud of their knowledge. They're proud of their science, and, and they refuse to listen to that man even threatening to take out his eyes because they say, well, that's keeping him from being a perfect man. He sees too much. You know, our world that we live in today, our world is proud of its science and its knowledge and even its own spirituality. But our world is oblivious to the truth. And when the world hears the truth, well, they think it's crazy. You're saying that a God created in the world? No, no, evolution. That's evolution, the Big Bang Theory. A God did not create our world. If you want to be truly wise, don't be like those who won't see. Don't be like the Pharisees. If you want to be truly wise, then don't be like those who can't see. Don't be like those who have no understanding of who Jesus really is. You know, that's where the disciples are at this point. At this point in the ministry of our Lord, they're still confused. They're still looking for a, a military Messiah. They're looking for a King David that will kick out the Romans and restore Jewish blood to the throne. They don't understand. They haven't figured it out yet. But Jesus is going to help them as they get into that boat to go to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. Look at verse 14. Now they had forgotten to bring bread. And they only had one loaf with them in the boat. And he cautioned them. Jesus cautioned them saying, watch out, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. Go back up to verse 10. We see where the area that they're in right now. And what was unique about this area was the palace of Herod. It stood about five stories tall. It dominated the horizon. And when you would leave from the shoreline, you know, you could look up and off in the distance there, you could see that great and beautiful palace. His disciples were confused about what was really important. They could see, the, they could see the, the wealth of the world. As their boat was leaving the shores of the Sea of Galilee, the disciples could look back and see the wealth of the world around them, and they're confused. So Jesus is trying to help them to understand. You see, just like yeast, which permeates a whole lump of dough, a, a longing for this outward trappings of success and power that folks like Herod and Pharisees had can only end up corrupting us on the inside in our hearts. Luke chapter 12, verse 1. Jesus says, uh, you know, in the meantime, when, we, when so many thousands of people had, had gathered together, but they were trampling one another, he, Jesus, began to say to his disciples first, 
Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is what? Hypocrisy. They like to look the part. They like to look the part and look successful and powerful, but that's hypocrisy. Don't do that. Verse 16. And they began discussing with one another the fact that they had no bread. And Jesus, aware of this, said to them, Why? Why are you discussing the fact that you have no bread? Do you not yet perceive or understand? Are your hearts hardened? I think today we might say, uh, Do you have a, such a hard head? Or can I knock some sense into you? Jesus then, beginning in verse 18, will remind them, hey, remember what happened with the 5,000? You didn't have a whole lot, we fed a bunch of people. Remember the 4,000, didn't have a whole lot, we fed a bunch of people. You see, they had in their midst the source of all the power that they needed. Jesus was right there. These guys are so dense. They don't need the, the wealth and the power of the Pharisees and Herod. They had something better. They had Jesus. They have everything they need in Jesus, but they can't see it yet. They don't really understand. They know not, but they know that they know not, going back to that Persian proverb. That's why they're following Jesus. They're trying to learn. They're trying to learn, and that's why there's hope for them, for they can be taught. And that's why there's hope for you and me, so we can be taught. We can learn. Unlike the Pharisees who won't see, the disciples can't see, and, and sometimes we're just like that too. Sometimes we can't see or we forget. We forget what we have in Jesus. We forget that great treasure that we have in our Lord. Jesus provides for us time and time again, and yet with each new challenge, we worry about having enough resources. And folks, I think in this decade, we're going to face some of the biggest challenges that we've ever faced in our lifetime. This world is becoming very anti Christian. What do we do with a challenge like that? We have to lean on Jesus. We have to lean on the Lord. This is Stan Caffey. Stan Caffey and his fiance were cleaning out this garage or standing there in the garage getting ready to get married. You know, you always accumulate a lot, a lot of junk that you need to get rid of. One of the things that they got rid of, one of the things they sold was an old document that had hung on Stan's garage wall for about 10 years. A man named Michael Sparks bought that document for $2.48, less than three bucks. He turns around and puts it on auction and sells it for almost a half a million dollars. What was it? It was a rare copy of the original Declaration of Independence. It had been on his garage wall for 10 years. What does Stan say about that? Here's what he said. If we hadn't sold it, the decoration would probably still be hanging in our garage and not truly appreciated. Folks, that's you and me sometimes. That describes some Christians. They like to have Jesus hanging around, but they don't know what he's really worth. They don't realize what they have in Jesus the Christ. My dear friends, let's not forget the supreme treasure we have that is Christ. If we want to be truly wise, don't be like those who won't see and don't be like those who can't see. Instead, ask Jesus to help you. To do what? To open your spiritual eyes and see. Verse 22. 
And they came to Bethsaida, and some people brought to him a blind man and begged him to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand and, and led him out of the village. And when he had spit on his eyes and laid his hands on him, he asked him, do you, do you see anything? And he looked up and said, I see people, but they look like trees walking. This blind man, he has some sight, courtesy of Jesus. But it's very blurry. He can't distinguish between men and trees yet, yet, yet except that some of them are, are walking around. What does Jesus do next? Verse 25, then Jesus laid his hands on his eyes again, and he opened his eyes, and his sight was restored. He saw everything clearly, and he sent him to his home, saying, do not even enter the village. This is a different type of miracle. This is a unique two-stage miracle. Who is it? Who's the benefit? Well, the benefit, first off, is the blind man, but really the true benefit is for the disciples. The, this man, the man is not completely healed at first. It takes a couple of touches from Jesus, but eventually he does come to see everything clearly. This is a picture of what Jesus' disciples are going through. In terms of their understanding of Christ, their insight is growing. But it's not there yet. Later on, through the power of the Holy Spirit, they could remember this incident. And they could say, yeah, remember back when we didn't really understand, but now we see clearly? Remember the Gospel of Mark was written to Christians suffering under Nero's persecution in Rome. And see they couldn't see the purpose. They couldn't see the hope. They couldn't see the big picture. And Mark is trying to help them to see the big picture. You think authority is with Nero? You think authority is with Rome? No, all authority is with Jesus. Jesus is in control. And we can trust him to see us through whatever situation we may have. Whatever happens this decade, we can see it through because we've got Jesus on our side. It may be hard to see now, but eventually we will see if, circle that word if, if we stay close to him. This is Fanny J. Crosby. You probably recognize that name. She wrote about 20 of the songs in our songbook. She actually wrote many, many, many more than that. When she was just six weeks old, just as a baby, she developed a, a fairly simple eye infection, easily treated even way back in, in 1820. Unfortunately, the doctor did something wrong, terribly wrong, causing her to go blind. She was asked... How do you feel about that doctor? Here's her quote. If I could meet the doctor now, I would say thank you over and over again for making me blind. Well, why would she say that? Because she attributed her ability to write those wonderful songs that we sing today to the fact that she could see spiritually. It opened up her spiritual eye to see better. God's Word. My friends, that's what difficult times can do for us. If we do face some difficult times in the years to come, difficult times doesn't have to drive us away from God. It can drive us closer to God. Those difficult times can give us spiritual insight we never had before. They can help us see Jesus like we've never seen them before. At first, things may be a little unclear, like it was for that blind man. But just give Jesus time. 
At first, we might not fully understand how Jesus can be God in the midst of our trials, but eventually we will if we stay close to Christ, if we stay close to Him. Not just here in this building, but 24-7. We're talking about living for Jesus 24-7. If you want to be truly wise, don't be like those who won't see and don't be like those who can't see. Instead, be like those who do see. How do they see? It's because they let Jesus touch them. Not just once, but as many times as it takes. In other words, no matter how hard life gets, keep trusting Jesus. Keep following Jesus, and eventually, eventually you will see. One of the songs that Fanny J. Crosby wrote is this song. Look at the words. All the way my Savior leads me. What have I to ask beside? Can I doubt His tender mercy? Who through life has been my God, heavenly peace, divinest comfort, here by faith in Him to dwell. For I know what e'er befall me, Jesus doeth all things well. This morning, who are you trusting? Who do you trust in difficult times? Are you ready to put your faith in Him? To believe, repent, confess, and be baptized. These are not my words. Those words are from Jesus himself. If you are a Christian and, and maybe, well, maybe people don't see Christ living in you. Maybe your example is not what a Christian example should be. Maybe, maybe you look around and, and you put more trust in the world instead of putting trust in the Lord do you need to seek forgiveness? He will forgive, 1 John 1, not. The church here stands ready to pray with you and for you. And Nathan has a song designed to encourage you to make that decision. I'm going to have elders down here waiting for you. Will you step out today as we stand and sing for your encouragement?